Hello. So whilst 2020 was, to use the technical term, a load of old piss, I did paint a lot of models during it, and the last couple of months were no exception, so let's not dawdle around and get right into it. First up we have another runt herd for my rebel grots, and I'm pretty happy with it. I like making these kinds of proxies since they're effectively mini dioramas, so it's an interesting challenge. Plus fitting all this on a 32mm base can be tricky. But yeah, it's painted like all my other grots, so not much to say here. Next up is a pair of 2nd edition gun crew that, like the previous ones, were sent in by Rich. I don't have the gun for them finished yet, but I suppose they could always be used as ammo runts or something similar too. Like the previous ones I painted, these have a lot of character to them, so they were fun to paint and help mix up the look of the force a little. So, it's been a while since I painted any more of my Argent Warden Space Marines, something I apparently decided to make up for this time since I've, um, I've painted a bunch. This first one is a basic tech marine I made using a little bit of everything. It's a little rough in some places like the backpack, but it does the job well enough. Thought it'd be different to have the servo arm be sort of underslung rather than over the shoulder. You know, it just makes it a little more unique. Next is a full squad that I actually built back when Blood of Baal first came out and introduced Death Company Intercessors, which was either around the beginning of 2020 or four decades ago. Um, it's hard to keep track anymore. They're made from a mixture of Easy Build and Dark Imperium intercessors, with a few parts stolen for other kits. Oh, including a statuesque miniatures Techno Roider head for this one. Basically, I painted them about halfway through at the start of the year and then left them languishing on a shelf until November when I was apparently bitten by the marine bug and finally finished them off. They were simple enough to paint, but I did not anticipate how awkward it would be to paint the X's how I did on curved pauldrons. Like, I'm proud of how they came out, but... Wow, was it a pain to make them look even remotely even. Oh, here's something a little different. An epic scale Thunderbolt. Quite a lot smaller than their modern Aeronautica Imperialis equivalents. It's actually from the Battle Over Das Sulfur River box, so I painted it in grey to set it apart from the Orc planes that I'll be painting more vibrantly. It was a nice little model to paint, honestly. Now we have some things that I'm not counting as minis for the total since they're well, not minis, but I wanted to show you them anyway since they were something I painted. It's a bunch of dice mounted on bases that I'm going to use as objective markers. We've often used dice for markers anyway, so it felt like a fitting idea to integrate them into the world. Plus, they're numbered 1 to 6 and alternately coloured, so it's easy to keep track of who put what down should that be needed. I don't know, it just seemed like a neat idea to me. Uh, the dice were originally some of the basic white ones that came with Conquest magazine, in case you were wondering. I also made this classic weird alien cactus of the sort you'd find in old GW books. I will be making more of them at a later date, but this was just a quick test to see how one would come out. In the future I'll put a more sturdy base on them, but you know, I'm happy with how this first one came out. Now we have a couple of RTB01 marines. Nothing you haven't seen before in this series, for this first one he's just another standard marine. Although the second one has a custom combi melter that I made using his original gun and the combi melter piece from a tactical marine box. Just for those that aren't aware, I use my squad of rogue trader marines as stern guards since, you know, they're the oldest marines in the army. So these two were painted just to give me a few more options as to how I built that squad. Now, this lad is just a regular captain made from the contents of my bits box. He was built for 8th edition and would sit alongside a cheap lieutenant giving my gunline rerolls, but due to the changes in auras for 9th, I don't know how often he'll actually get used anymore, but hey, it's another option I have now, and I quite like how he came out. Here's a model I've been putting off for a while, the Primaris Chaplain, a model I both love and could never justify the price tag for. However, my wife Snipe got it for me a few Christmases ago, and I just never got around to painting it since it felt a little intimidating. I wanted to do a good job on it, you know. However, I finally bit the bullet, and I think it looks pretty neat in my slightly non-conventional colours. Pretty proud of the tiny little symbols on the, um, scarf, ribbon, whatever it is. Anyway, it's a nice model, and I'm glad to finally have it painted. Next, we have a Warhound Titan from Adeptus Titanicus. This was sent to me a while ago by Shanus, but I didn't get around to starting to paint it because I just couldn't decide on how I wanted to do it. I eventually settled on this simple Chaos Undivided scheme because I have enough for a small Titanicus force and I didn't want to make the scheme too much of a hassle. Pretty happy with the plasma coil especially, I don't think I've tried to do one in this colour before and it came out better than I hoped. The little guys on the base are some epic marines that a lovely chap called Jeremy sent into our PO box a while back. I like how they help convey the size of the Warhound even if they're not perfectly in scale with each other. But then epic scale was all over the place anyway so it's probably fine. 
This one is another model from Shanus. It's a Rogue Trader Custodes with quivering abs. Yeah, if you're not aware, the shirtless Custodes aren't entirely an invention of Brother Alpha Busa. They're from the dark days of first edition. It was originally released as an Imperial bodyguard several months before the Rogue Trader rulebook was even out, in fact. Which makes it one of the oldest models in my 40k collection. And I think the sculpt has actually held up surprisingly well, considering. In the last log of last year, I showed off a single sniper scout, and you've probably wondered where the rest of that squad are. Well, here they are. As you're probably noticing, I've been on a bit of a quest to chip away at all the marines I'd not finished. And part of that was finishing off squads that I started but never completed, like the Death Company before. Pleased with how they turned out makes for a nice cheap troops choice to plop down in some terrain and irritate an opponent with, or at least they would have been, had they not changed them to an Elite's choice for 9th edition. Also on the finishing unfinished squads thing, here's an easy build intercessor that was the last member of a squad I started painting like two years ago. Not much special about him, I just swapped out his all specs hand for one with a magazine and clipped the one off his bolt rifle to make it look like he's mid reload. Just means that he'd look different from the other marine of the same sculpt that I had in that squad. So here's something fun. I'd mentioned that I was going to be trying out Age of Sigmar in 2021. Seraphon specifically, I, I, I just like skinks, okay? So Longfang's Christmas present to me included a squad of chameleon skinks. Their skin is painted pretty much the same as I do my grots, honestly, but my regular skinks will be in the bright blue you usually see them in. I will say I'm glad I painted this squad in a batch since there's a lot of fiddly details on them that would have frustrated the hell out of me if I'd have done them individually. Like the legs on the frogs they have strapped to them. Yeah, frogs. Who here doesn't leave the house without a few frogs lashed to their limbs, I ask you? But hey, this does mean that my 2021 army project already has a nice little head start. Next we have a Stormhawk, which is like part one of another thing that I'm trying to get on top of, which is vehicles. I've got a bunch of them lying around that are either un- or partially painted. This one was picked first since it's already had a bit of a hard life. You see, just after it was primed, the DSLR that this is filmed on fell onto it. Fortunately, the base and stand took the brunt of it, but it does mean there's a few bits of damage here and there if you know where to look. The camera was fine too, by the way. It was just terrifying and could have been a very expensive accident. This model was sent to me last Christmas by Patrick, which was one of the other reasons that I chose to paint this vehicle first since I'm also trying to get on top of painting the gifts that people have sent me. It's fully magnetised and I've painted all the different weapon options it can have. Honestly, I just really like the model and I'm looking forward to getting it out on the tabletop, you know, when the UK's tabletops are available to me again. Now we have another Christmas present, a flumpf. This was also from Snipe, I think mostly because she knows how much I'd like saying the word flumpf. This is one of those ready to paint D&D minis, so I tried to come up with a quick and simple way of doing this one. Found out that the primer that they use doesn't work super well with washes or contrast paints, but it works well enough. Although the hardest part was avoiding getting paint on the clear stand since it's sculpted into the model so it can't be removed as far as I could tell. Placed it on a regular GW 25mm base since the original ones it came with were super super tiny and thin and it just didn't look right. Pretty happy with the final result and it gave me an opportunity to try out a few things I don't normally do. There was another one in the pack so I'll probably try a completely different colour scheme on the other one. And finally, the last model of 2020, we have a Chaos Marine. He's one of the ones from Shadow Spear, and I painted him up in a sort of pseudo Alpha Legion look. Hence the double X on the shoulder, since they were the 20th Legion. Originally, I was going to do the old blue with green highlights way of painting Alpha Legion, but I couldn't get a version of that that I liked, so instead I painted the blue more conventionally, but included the green on other places instead. Mostly, what this has done is just make me really appreciate the modern Chaos Marine sculpts. They're just really nice. So, how does that all shake out? Well, I painted 29 models in the last two months of the year, and very few of them were goblins. I know, I'm as surprised as you. This brings my grand total for 2020 up to 147 models painted to 114 bought. So despite buying quite a bit this year, I managed to keep ahead. Granted, if you counted models that I was bought as birthday or Christmas presents, it'd probably be in the red, but you know, details. Still, if you're wondering how that all broke down, of those 147 models spreading over around a dozen different game systems, I painted this many Rebel Grots, there's 70 regular Gretchen in there if you're wondering, this many models for my Blood Angel successors, and this many non-Games Workshop models. 
Actually, those latter ones are something I hope to keep doing next year. It's nice to paint some non-GW stuff from time to time, since they often just have a different vibe. Plus, you know, it's cool to showcase stuff from more than one company. One thing you've probably noticed is that quite a few models in this video came from other people, so I just want to put out a huge, huge thank you to Rich, Snipe, Seamus, Jeremy, Longfang, and Patrick, as well as everybody else who sent in models that I may or may not have gotten around to painting yet. I am incredibly lucky to be in the position that people send me these things, and I am eternally grateful. Thank you. Oh, also, I know that I said that I was going to do a Q&A at the end of this video, but since it's already getting really long, and I got way more questions than I thought I would, I'm going to spin that off into its own Q&A video. So yeah, that'll be up shortly after this video. For now, I'll just say thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support this series gets. And I guess I'll see you back here in two months where I'll have a whole new host of tiny plastic peoples.